let's start. So um, I told uh, you last time, a month ago, that uh, this month I may prepare something about time zone file uh, upgrade. So I thought uh, today we can do some introductory uh, short session uh, about um, storing of timestamps in Oracle and how it relates to time zones and why uh, why do we actually need to update the time zone files. So uh, let me uh, share my Oracle developer screen. One moment, just wanted to make sure. Okay, the right video is uh, shown. Okay, I assume uh, you can see my SQL developer screen. Uh, so let's take a look at how Oracle stores uh, the timestamp information internally in tables. This is important in the context of time zone information. All right, so let's. Uh, let's start with creating a like, test uh, table in which. Uh, there will be like four columns with the uh, date time data types that Oracle supports. We skip intervals because they are not uh, important in this context. Just concentrate on the uh, types that we use uh, to store uh, time step information or date time information. We have the historical date data type, which is very old. I don't even know in which database release it was added, I guess, in the first one, uh, which was Oracle 2. Uh, so uh, this one is actually a timestamp in um, old form, right? So while, while it says date, and uh, the SQL standard actually says that a date data type just stores year, month, and day, uh, Oracle also stores hour, minute, and second for historical reasons, because there was no separate timestamp data type until Oracle 9. We have the timestamp, which here, just as an example, uh, I specified the uh, precision for the uh, fractional second part. So we, we want to store up to five uh, digits um, of uh, uh, fractional second. Uh, and so timestamp is basically very similar to date in what is stored there. So a date and also hour, minute, second. But additionally, we have the possibility to store fractional seconds up to nine digits. So one billionth of the second is the uh, maximum resolution. You can put nine here. The default is six. As far as I remember, we have here, as an example, specified five, right? And then we have the timestamp data type, but with time zone, which is similar to timestamp, except that we also have uh, time zone information stored together with the timestamp. And there is another type, which is timestamp with local time zone, where the stored value is normalized to the database time zone, not the system time zone, not what the sysdate time zone is or systimestamp time zone is, but the database time zone, something that is established at, uh, at the uh, database creation and generally is never changed. It can be changed if there are no uh, columns with this uh, time step with local time zone data type, but generally when, when such columns are already added and are not, not empty, then you cannot change the DB time zone 
uh, anymore. Let's see actually how it looks like in my uh, database. In my database, the, the dB time zone is uh, UTC, so offset zero. The time zones uh, may be offsets to the universal time, which is more or less what previously was called green, Greenwich Mean Time. So the time that was uh, the local time of, of the uh, of the meridian that goes through the uh, Greenwich uh, Astronomical Observatory in New London, or in London actually, but uh, uh, this is no longer, uh, GMT is no longer used actually, you should use UTC, which is a kind of a system, uh, uh, sorry, world standard for time zone keeping. So uh, any database that is created by default by DBCA will actually have the DB time zone set to offset zero, which means UTC. However, if you create the, uh, a, a database manually, uh, this time zone will be set to the current system time zone. So whatever the operating system sees as the offset um, from UTC will be stored uh, with the database. My session time zone, which we will uh, talk about later, um, is set to Europe Warsaw, which is like my hometown. So it's why it's, it's the current, uh, session, uh, current session time zone. I can change the session time zone with the alter session set time zone statement to whatever I want. And this is the something that an application can use to, to establish the current uh, time zone of, of the end user. So the idea is this is the time zone that the user wants to see uh, time step information in. Okay, let's create this table. Sorry, I have to drop it first. Okay, create it. Now, let's insert one row with some values uh, into it so that we can look at how Oracle stores uh, this uh, time zone information, uh, sorry, this time, uh, date time information in, in the columns that we have just created. Here uh, in this insert statement, you see the uh, date time literals, something that I highly recommend to use if you need to store uh, some constant, given constant time. Don't use to date or to timestamp because you, you need to specify the format to make sure that, uh, that everything is uh, um, represented correctly. You may actually also need to hard, core, hard code the NLS calendar parameter to make sure that uh, to date or to timestamp interpret the string that you pass in the Gregorian calendar. So if you use the literals, the literals have a fixed format, fixed calendar, it's always Gregorian, and you don't have to uh, specify the format, and this is a much better way to specify constant uh, time values. So for date, we have, I have used an SQL um, a standard compliant literal, it only allows to specify year, month, and day, even though the date data type in Oracle also specifies time or stores time, you cannot specify this in the literal. However, if you want to store a, a date value, Oracle date value, together with time, you, can, you could actually specify the timestamp literal because the, uh, the timestamp literal is of the data type timestamp. However, Oracle will implicitly convert it to date when necessary. So you can use the timestamp literal to specify the values. Okay, let's insert this one row, insert it, right? And now we can select it to double check what is stored. We can see the date. Is the one that we stored. Timestamp is the one we stored. Timestamp with time zone. I have used on purpose. I haven't used 
the timestamp with time zone literal, which would require here a time, a time zone to be specified. I have used as a, a standard timestamp literal without time zone. If you specify a timestamp without time zone and you store it in a column of the data type timestamp with time zone, Oracle will automatically add the current session time zone to this value, right? So in this, it will treat it as a local time. We need to remember it will uh, treat it as a local time. So we have a midnight on the 1st of January 2001. We associate it with the uh, session time zone Europe Warsaw and store it um, uh, in the column. Timestamp uh, with uh, local time zone is interpreted uh, as uh, is shown here uh, also as stored. Uh, however, we will later uh, later see how the internal uh, um, interpretation uh, or internal format is actually different. So let's look at this internal format. I have used the dump function, which shows us the values of particular bytes that are used to uh, represent a given value on disk when. Uh, when it is stored in a, in a table. Okay, so let's run this statement. Now, we can see, okay, to, to make it easier to read, uh, okay, this is this value in a single record format so that we can see all values easily uh, on the screen, right? The date, seven bytes always seven bytes, right? And this seven bytes represent this first January of 2001 in the following way. The first byte is the century plus 100. So this is the century is 20, so two first digits of the year, 20 plus 100, 120. These are decimal numbers. Then the year in the, in the century is one plus 100, one, uh, 101. Why plus 100? Because we also need to store the negative years. So before Christ, right? In the, in the, before, uh, uh, in the, so we represent, we represent uh, uh, dates bef uh, in, um, uh, before Christ era as negative numbers when we show them. However, internally, they are stored as uh, the uh, number 100 minus uh, century or the number 100 minus uh, the year, because we want to make sure that when we compare the date values using memcompare, uh, the um, result is correct. So memcompare gives you the same ordering as you would ex uh, expect from date time values when they are compared. So we cannot use here like a highest bit uh, set for uh, negative numbers because this would mean that this byte is larger uh, for negative numbers, so dates before zero. Uh, then the center is after uh, year zero. So we would have the reverse order when comparing dates in current era and in the uh, before current era. So it's why instead Oracle uses a uh, like displacement, right? So we, we add 100 actually to the year to make sure that uh, the ordering is correct. For a month, uh, we uh, use the month uh, number directly from 1 to 12. For day, we use the day directly from 1 to 31, whatever is the legal uh, uh, maximum value for the given month. In, it, it takes leap years into consideration, of course. And then the, the three last bytes is our 
uh, minutes and seconds, as you see here, this is actually plus one. So midnight, which is zero, is actually stored as one. Zero minutes is stored uh, as one. Zero seconds is stored as one, because for some reasons, which I don't really know, historically, we wanted to avoid the, the, the byte zero uh, stored uh, on disk. However, when we uh, have the uh, fractional part, it's no longer offset by one. So seconds are plus one, but uh, like fractional part, uh, billions of seconds are no longer uh, offset by one. So let uh, so this was the date. As we see, the uh, timestamp is very similar, except that it has the four, four extra bytes for the fractional part. This uh, this four bytes is the fractional part. This two bytes, if you uh, if you calculate, uh, just let me quickly share my, uh, the calculator. Right. This is 39 times 256 plus 16, right? So the first and the second byte is 10,000. So this is a 10,000 billionth of the second, which is uh, uh, exactly which is exactly this one uh, hundredth thousands of a second right it's difficult difficult numbers to pronounce uh, forgive me if i misspelled it somehow or... okay so this was a timestamp so as you see very similar except that we have this extra four bytes uh, uh, to uh, to store fractional part timestamp with time zone data type has another two bytes it's very similar except we have extra bytes where we encode the time zone information. Uh, I, I will not go into detail how it's exactly stored. Uh, I mean, there is one bit here that differentiates between two format of the time uh, time zone. You have a you can have a time zone uh, information which is just an offset, right? So you can say you can say here plus seven hours right so this is plus seven hours uh, in respect to utc so this would be uh, i'm not sure probably some, some somewhere in asia right or we can go other other way so this is before utc so the time is earlier than it is uh, now in uh, in london uh, or actually London is now on, on uh, summer time, so it would be London in winter time. Minus seven uh, is currently the uh, offset for uh, Pacific time, I think. So this is more or less the time in uh, Los Angeles in summer, right? So this is a numerical value, and this value uh, is already kind of hard-coded for, for the given uh, uh, date time which means it is not uh, subject to any uh, daylight saving time uh, operations. Because we have already said, this is the, the offset uh, to UTC is this, and we haven't said what area of the world this time zone refers to. We, we know that more or less minus seven, it will be a summer time for, uh, for Pacific or probably winter time, uh, mountain. Um, however, uh, we don't know exactly, right? So this is hard coded. This does not undergo any daylight saving time operations. However, we can also have the region, right? Like Europe Warsaw, in which case we don't specify the offset. The offset is calculated by Oracle based on the information that it has about daylight sa daylight saving time rules uh, for the given uh, region for the given time zone uh, region right so here 
what happened is this 391, uh, sorry, uh, let's see the uh, uh, record view again. This 134 and 56, these two bytes together, encode the region, region ID for uh, Europe Warsaw, right? So this is this particular uh, time zone. And now, based on the information that uh, Oracle has about what offset is in effect for the local time that we wanted to store, which is the first, uh, first of January 2001, which is middle of the winter, so it's winter time in Europe. Um, uh, this winter time in Europe is one hour um, later than UTC, right? So when it is uh, midnight in um, London, in Warsaw, it's already uh, one uh, in the night of the next day. And this is exactly what happened, uh, what we can see here, that we have the previous year, and previous year, it's no longer 2001, it's 2000, it's third, 31st of uh, December, and the, and the time is, we remember uh, that uh, the hour is actually offset by one, so this is 23, 11 p.m., 00, right? So what Oracle stores for a timestamp with time zone is the time in UTC together with zero. We had uh, uh, we had here a fractional part. However, uh, uh, you remember that we have just declared that it's timestamp without specifying uh, precision, which means that the fault precision six has been uh, um, is active, which means one two, three, four, five, six. So six here is uh, zero, so zeros. So it's why we have zeros here. This was truncated because we, uh, we said that we don't want to store uh, precision uh, more than six uh, decimal digits uh, for the fractional part. Okay, so we have the previous day, 11 p.m., because this was, the time, the UTC time, when it when it was midnight, first of uh, January two thousand one in Warsaw. So, as you see, we have the uh, the timestamp is, is stored as UTC time plus uh, time zone information. When we have the local time zone, time zone, you can uh, so timestamp with local time zone you can see that the time is actually the same here, right, as it is here, except that there is no time zone uh, information uh, anymore. Zeros, by the way, have been truncated because if the functional part is zero and there is no uh, uh, time um, zone information uh, after it, we don't actually store this four bytes. So this, we are uh, down to seven bytes. Uh, if there would be some fractional part, four bytes would be added and the length would be uh, 11. Uh, however, this is again, uh, as, as I said previously, the timestamp values uh, in local time zone are normalized to the database time zone. And the database time zone is UTC in my database. So this time is the UTC of this timestamp uh, that we have specified with the Europe Warsaw uh, time zone uh, attached to it, right? We could say, of course, uh, also, uh, let's say, just as a test, we can say uh, America Los Angeles. Angeles, I hope I wrote it correctly. All right, let's insert it. Let's look at how it's stored.
you can see now, right, that the same time, midnight in uh, Los Angeles is actually here. The same time, uh, sorry, the same day, so the 1st of uh, January uh, 2001, and this is already uh, 8 uh, a.m. Uh, in London. And the, and the uh, region ID for America Los Angeles are two bytes, one, uh, 129 and 156. So again, there is the UTC time stored and, uh, and the information about time zone. This is actually also specified in uh, SQL standard. The SQL standard says that timestamps uh, are uh, saved as UTC plus time zone uh, information. Uh, however, the region time zones are an Oracle extension. So SQL standards only specifies the offsets. Uh, so this numerical offset uh, and there is no provision of daylight saving time uh, operations in uh, uh, SQL standard. And again, as we see, uh, the same UTC time is stored uh, for local uh, time step with local time zone, because again, we have normalized the same value uh, to, uh, to the database time zone, which is uh, offset zero. We with a different time zone, we would have a different value here. So we have kind of an implicit information about time zone, which is not stored with the same timestamp. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, stored in the sysprops table, right? If you look at the uh, sysprops, Value, which this is the table that stores various uh, uh, values that should rem remain constant uh, uh, through database life, more or less. We can see here uh, DB time zone zero zero, right? We can theoretically, we could theoretically try to change this time zone, alter database set time zone equal, let's say, uh, but we will get uh, the error that there are already timestamp with local time zone columns in the database. So this time zone cannot be changed anymore because we would change the interpretation of these timestamps and we don't want to, be, uh, to, to do this. Uh, okay, so now, uh, we, I have shown how, uh, how Oracle stores uh, uh, time step with time zone uh, values, which, is, which are relevant for uh, time zone file updates. This is the kind of uh, direction I'm going to, to actually talk about this uh, 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 time zone file uh, upgrades. So, uh, the date, timestamp data types, they are not uh, for, I mean, for them, the, uh, the time zone file is not relevant because time zone information is not stored with, the, with those data types. You can ask, okay, so what's the time, uh, time zone for those values? The answer is, it depends on the application, right? So a given application that interprets these values, it gives some uh, interpretation to the time zone. It may be UTC, it may be some local time zone that is stored somewhere in application configuration. In case of the uh, Oracle columns, uh, we know this is usually the system time zone, which is actually not good because the system time zone can change between um, uh, instance um, starts, startups, right? When you change the uh, TZ variable in Unix environment or, or you change the um, local um, time zone of the system on Windows, right? Then when the instance starts next time, it will 
get the new system time zone. However, whatever timestamps were stored there uh, are still inter uh, are still the same. They don't change at the same time, which means they are kind of uh, misinterpreted. So it's why uh, this is, of course, all design. Uh, there are a lot of date columns because before Oracle 9, there were, there were no data types uh, with time zones uh, available. For new, uh, for new columns, we sometimes already have the uh, time zone information included uh, in the data dictionary columns as well. So again, date, timestamp, for them, the time zone file is not relevant. For timestamp with local time zone, actually I should show the table definition. Okay, so for timestamp with local time zone, uh, time zone file is again uh, not, I mean, the time zone file is relevant because uh, uh, the database time zone can also be a region uh, time zone, which I don't recommend. I actually recommend to uh, leave the database time zone at null, uh, at, uh, at zero, offset zero UTC. I think we should actually have used this this way. So I would actually prefer this times uh, this data type to be timestamp with UTC time zone. Unfortunately, uh, we don't have such uh, time uh, data type which we have this data type. However, we can simulate the UTC uh, data type by just keeping the database time zone as uh, zero offset zero. However, uh, however, so so. Um, the time, uh, the time zone file is relevant for this data type. However, we don't upgrade any values uh, if the time zone file changes for this data type because they are already stored in this uh, in a given time zone in the given database time zone. So even if the uh, interpretation changes with the with the version, which I will quickly talk about in a moment. Uh, if the interpretation changes, the local value is still the same because this is uh, the value is stored uh, with, with the interpretation of being local time in the time zone, in the database time zone. So even if this local time is now interpreted differently uh, uh, in respect to UTC, it's still the local time is the same. So we don't have to change anything because uh, we want to keep the local uh, time. Now, let's, why I started to talk about like upgrade to the uh, time zone file. So the problem is uh, that for many regions, we have uh, the summer time and winter time. We have the daylight saving time uh, rules. So the offset uh, compared to UTC changes for, uh, for the given region, depending whether this is summer or winter, right? So if we compare, if we now, I have truncated the table, let's insert two timestamps in Warsaw time zone uh, at noon on the 24th, and 25th, 5th uh, uh, of uh, October this year, right? If we look at the interpretation of this values internally, right? We can see 2020, October 24, 24th, 25th, the same, Europe Warsaw, region ID, however, the time stored here, here is 10, and the time stored here is 11. We remember there is an offset, it is offset by one. So one is added to avoid the zero byte, right? So this is the 10 and this is 11. Why? Because this time, 24th, is still a summertime. This is Saturday, last Saturday of October. And in Warsaw, we changed the from summertime to winter time in the last, uh, sun, actually last Sunday of uh, October uh, at I think uh, three o'clock, we actually go back to two o'clock, right? Uh, and this is 
most of Europe um, actually changes the time at the same moment. This is earlier than United States. I think United States changes like uh, first uh, uh, Sunday of uh, November, if I remember correctly. Uh, so here on 24th noon is, uh, is still summer. So these are two hours offset from UTC. So there is a two hour difference. We are two hour later, right? So when uh, it is uh, noon in Europe, Warsaw, the UTC is 10, 10 hours. However, Sunday, 25th, it's already uh, winter time, which means it is uh, only one hour difference. And because there is only one hour difference, the, the hour that is stored is 11, and the byte is 12, so 11 plus one. So this, okay, this is still fine. This storage as in UTC form has a very nice property. If you compare timestamps in whatever time zone, when you compare just the value without these two last bytes, you actually can, you actually compare the absolute uh, uh, timestamp values, so absolute moments in time, normalized to UTC. Right, because all values are normalized to UTC. So this normalization to UTC makes sure that when you operate on those timestamps, you compare them, and this is one of the uh, operations that you want to be fast. Because if you go, you, you do a, usually a lot of searches and queries, much more than inserts. Uh, so you want to make sure that this information is very fast, and you don't have to convert from different time zones to uh, on the fly. So this is why uh, this, this storage in the UTC form is optimal from performance perspective for queries, where the comparison is much faster. You just compare uh, without, uh, without these uh, values. And this is actually what uh, the sys extract UTC. Uh, should do right it has removed the uh, time zone uh, information has left the uh, timestamps uh, in UTC it it also removed the um, uh, the fractional part of the seconds because it was zero so it saved some bytes by removing the the zero bytes from the end Right, so sys extract UTC, it's a, it's a built-in uh, SQL function that actually does explicitly what Oracle does implicitly when comparing uh, timestamp with time zone uh, values. Okay, but the problem now is that uh, we know that this calculation of the offsets, right, why, why we store the given UTC value, happens during insert when the uh, uh, local time in, in a given time zone was, co uh, was actually converted to UTC for storage, right? Now, what happens if European Union decides to uh, stay on summertime for forever, right? We won't, th there is discussion about it. So this is not an abstract, uh, um, uh, question, it can happen, right? So in, in such case, if we have, let's say it's not 2020, but actually we are now in 2010, right? So this is a future time step. Now, and now uh, European Union decides that we will no longer switch to winter time uh, on the last, um, on the last uh, Sunday of October in 2020, right? Because the rules change, the rule changed. It means that even on the 25th, with the new rule, when we don't switch, or let's say we switch later, right? It's also possible we decided to switch at the same time as US in, in November, right? In this case, on 25th, the offset will still be plus two for UTC, which means the value here should be 11, uh, which means that our is 10. 
right? It's an offset to uh, uh, compared to the to midnight uh, local time. And this is exactly what the database migration to the new time zone file is about. If there is a new time zone file that has a change in the time zone, uh, which is used in the values that uh, you uh, have in your database, then you have to correct the UTC time because we assume that you want the local time as shown here in the in the insert statement or as shown where you actually uh, select the values right so this midnight time here the local time you want this to remain the same so we have to correct the stored utc information so that after the the new time zone file uh, uh, starts to be used and the offset for this 25th of October 2020 will now be still treated as plus two and not plus one we still want the same time to be shown here which means it means uh, which means we need to correct the stored UTC information by one hour and this is what exactly what this uh, time zone upgrade uh, is about if you don't have any timestamp with time zone values that are uh, stored with the time zone region that is affected by the change of the version, then you don't uh, you don't care much. Uh, in most cases, you can actually leave the database with the older version. You may have some problem later uh, when you try to move this data to some other database uh, with some newer file because you. you the information that is uh, passed along uh, may be um, there may be some complaints from from whatever application you use that that there is a difference in in uh, time zone uh, files. However, um, I think for most situations we have actually taken care of it, and we convert the time stamp values on, on the fly uh, if uh, necessary. Right. So, uh, this was basically uh, an introduction why we actually have to, uh, to uh, store this value. Let me quickly okay, so just one one slide I hope this is what is uh, uh, sorry. okay I hope you see the slide um, so there are two cases actually where we need to to modify some time steps right because a new time zone file can have two types of changes. One type of change is sometimes there are correction to historical data for a time zone. So uh, sometimes uh, somebody found out in some very old newspaper from uh, 19th century that uh, in the given region, uh, the time observed in whatever 1920 was actually not uh, offset plus two but it was offset plus three because uh, this given area decided to uh, to switch to whatever from mountain time to pacific time or, or the other way around so for this situation there will be a change in the uh, time zone information in the file however because it affects historical dates usually because the modern in modern times uh, the documentation was good enough and we actually already have the proper information in the uh, time zone file uh, however for historical uh, dates there may be some change however who stores time with dates in 19th century or the beginning of 20th century right we don't have usually information with that precision you just 
if you really have to store such historical information, you usually just store dates, right? So use the, you use the date data type, you don't uh, really store any time with it. So it would be very rare that you have actually any timestamp with time zone that needs correction for this type of changes, and it's good, right? The second type of changes is when the DST rule uh, is changed by government for a given re region uh, uh, to affect future timestamps, this year or future years, right? In like more stable uh, 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 countries with more stable economy, you usually give some lead time uh, to uh, to uh, to the industry to s change the rules, right? So in European Union or in, in United States, you usually will have a, some time like one year or two year uh, years to make sure that you can uh, update all uh, uh, systems. However, there are countries where such rules can uh, be defined like two weeks before the actual rule take effect. And this is pretty common, for example, in Middle East, because the DST uh, rules there um, are related to certain religious um, festivities, like um, Ramadan, for example, which means that uh, information about when Ramadan will start uh, is uh, announced very late, and the governments in, for example, uh, Morocco um, decide that uh, about this DST rule switch to summertime very late and there is some, sometimes like two weeks to, to 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 upgrade the file so and this of course affects also like your smartphones and operating system and so on so it's not just the the database so if you have future times uh, timestamps uh, that needs correction because they were stored using the previous rule that was in effect and and you have some timestamps that happen to to fall uh, to fall in the uh, time period where that will differ between these two uh, two time zone files, you have to uh, change the timestamps, upgrade the, the timestamps. If you, if you have only historical, uh, I mean, only timestamps that refer to pre, uh, to something that already happened, then usually you are not affect, affected anymore because uh, these timestamps, uh, uh, the rules for those time, uh, those timestamps will not change with the new version of the time zone file. Okay, so this is more or less what I wanted to talk about this month. Uh, I hope to continue with this subject uh, in November when I want to, to go through the actual upgrade uh, process. So let's see, I, I've seen a question on the chat. Is there a document that maps the default time zone version for each release? of the database. Uh, for instance, I know the time zone version for release uh, 11 to release 14. Uh, this is a good question. I would assume there is some MOS node, uh, so my Oracle support node that talks about it. However, I don't know it by uh, heart, so uh, I can't tell for sure. So certainly this is something that can be uh, like compiled. Uh, however, because of the number of various versions that we have, uh, it is possible that we that we may have this information for like major releases, but not for each uh, part set because we have part sets, we have CPUs, uh, and of course we have patches, right? So you can install new new time zone information for. Um, for um, given um, for a given release, you can add the newest uh, newest uh, time zone uh, file. Of course, if you have a given version uh, available, right, you can install it. And uh, let me share another screen. Right, if you go to the Oracle Home, Oracle Zone Info Directory, right? 
So the default, uh, default version for the given release is the one with the highest number. Uh, assuming you have not installed any patches, time zone patches yet. So if you have a fresh uh, installation of a given, uh, of a given uh, release of the database, you will have the, the highest version here is the uh, version 32, right? And this is the default one that comes with, uh, this is I think version 19, uh, 19.3, 19.3, right? So this is what, what should come with 19.3 uh, database, right? Uh, okay, so uh, I know it, it, I haven't really answered this question. I will try to find this information uh, maybe for the, uh, for the next office hours uh, in November. Uh, uh, so let's see if there is already such document compiled by somebody with with the information. If not, uh, then then we need to compile maybe one. Uh, however, it is usually not that uh, relevant because, as, as you know, each database actually that even is uh, installed from a given release may have been patched later to a newer time zone file. So it does not tell you really much uh, about uh, any given database. However, it is some information, of course, if you want to know what, uh, what version of the time zone file and, uh, is there and what are the differences that you may have uh, uh, in, a given type, uh, in the given, uh, between two given releases. By the way, there is a CSV file in this directory which actually describes what's new in each release of the uh, of the uh, time zone file. So you can see here that uh, in version 32, there were some historical probably changes. As you see, 1912, uh, 1800. Uh, so uh, old dates were uh, were like. Uh, Corrected. However, here we see something newer. I would have to change, check the history uh, of the uh, time zone uh, group email list where where these ch changes are discussed. You can everybody can um, subscribe to the time, uh, Yana uh, time zone uh, discussion list and can follow all the changes that are planned in the following releases. So we see that in most cases uh, uh, there are some historical corrections for for quite a lot of different uh, time zones, but they are historical, so usually they don't affect you. However, here we see there are some changes for future uh, for future dates in like in Gaza or uh, Brazil East. I, Okay, so actually, I guess this, this time zone uh, file was released uh, already uh, two years ago. So it's why we have a lot of uh, 2018 changes and actually no later changes. Uh, I don't remember when 19.3 uh, was, was released. So I guess this uh, time zone file was uh, released around uh, 2018. Uh, 18. So it's why you actually see the, uh, this, uh, this information. Uh, there is no information here about uh, which uh, time zone uh, actually uh, uh, time zone uh, database version it is uh, based on. Actually, this is one information that that I have uh, haven't uh, uh, I haven't uh, told you. The Oracle uh, time zone file information is directly generated from the uh, time zone database that is currently maintained by Yana. Uh, so uh, we we don't invent anything ourselves. Uh, we simply uh, take the newest uh, version of the uh, of the uh, time zone database and generate a time zone file out of it. We don't do this. I think 
uh, as often as uh, Iana does. So I think we, there is some rule that we do this like twice a year or something like this. However, if there is some very important change, and then we may actually release uh, some emergency uh, uh, version uh, in between, so that if, if there is customer demand for some popular time zone uh, with with some important change, uh, that that this is taken care of uh, quickly by Oracle as well. Okay, uh, we are already almost. Uh, uh, out of time, just one minute. Are there any more questions? Okay. Uh, I see. Uh... Okay, thank you very much for uh, kudos that uh, I. I I'm very happy that you understood that I cleared something about this. I hope the the next the, the second part uh, next month uh, will be also uh, useful. It's actually more practical about uh, upgrade, um, so that you understand what are the steps uh, that uh, you have to do to upgrade to the new uh, version of the time zone file. Okay, so thank everybody and uh, please join me uh, next month uh, to see the second part uh, of this uh, presentation. So thank you. Bye.